And we are ready. Hi, hello, hello. I hope you're good, guys. Welcome back to the Egyptian Feeling. And I know it's been a while. And uh, as you know, I launched the podcast, so this is already the second episode. And I'm waiting for the for the confirmation for the third one. So great. Now, so I thought um, since I'm gonna do a, like a public speech here in, my, in the place I live uh, about what happened before Khufu uh, in terms of architecture. Um, I thought it would be useful to first do the presentation here on the channel to test and then to do it actually live uh, here on, in the physical world. So, so yeah, let's see how it goes. The, the whole speech will be around 40 minutes and uh, so today I'm gonna test if, uh, if, it, if I can make it under 40 minutes. So the scope of the whole presentation is to show um, for, to show the development of Egypt, ancient Egyptian architecture for the very first tomb of Narmer to, to, the, to the Great Pyramid of Giza. So, so yeah, I think if you, if you like the video, then like the video. If you like to subscribe, please do, because this helps quite a lot. And yeah, I would like to start. If you, if you don't mind, let's, uh, let, let's start, right? And <laughs> yeah, okay, let's start. <laughs> So I'm quite uh, I'm quite uh, excited and uh, but but yeah so it's there is a lot to talk about today and let's see if I can make it under 40 minutes. So um, yeah so this is me and um, uh, let's see okay yeah you should you should be able to see this. Uh, this is me uh, I don't know like in 2000 or 1999. I was in Egypt, I was on the beach and I was extremely, you know, uh, inspired by the pyramids and uh, this is the reason why I started the Egyptian feeling like probably like uh, 20 years later, you know, <laughs> or more than 20 years later. And uh, yeah, um, it's, it's a funny picture. Uh, okay, so this is the... These are the three major pyramids of Giza, okay? Plus the other three pyramids you see uh, underneath the Queen, the, the other three uh, satellite pyramids. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, for people, I'm gonna pretend that you don't know, so then, uh, you know, like a general public. So, as you, if you don't know, this is the pyramid of, Guf, the, of Khufu, the one to the right, and uh, it's the biggest pyramid uh, in the world now. Okay, it's contentious, but basically it was the tallest building on earth for 4,000 years or something like that. Uh, actually, no, sorry, for 3,500 years, something like that. And um, and uh, it's 150 meters tall, and uh, it's extremely well done, and. Uh, Archaeology says it was done in 28 years, but there are 2.2 million blocks of stones, so which makes a little bit of a nonsense, you know, because in order to to do this pyramid in 28 years, they will have to put uh, every like one block every five minutes, more or less, okay, or even less. And uh, and inside of that pyramid, there are blocks that like weight, like one single, like like dozens of blocks inside of granite, and those blocks uh, weight about. 70 tons, which, you know, if, if you don't know what is a ton, basically uh, 70 tons equals to 35 SUVs, so one for one block, so. And one wonders how and why this happened. How come? Well, what happened before? Well, how Egyptians made it to, to this point? So we will, we will uncover this today. So Egypt before Khufu. So what the, uh, about uh, just the, a little bit of a time here, um, just about time, we will do from basically 3000 BC to 2500 more or less BC, so it's basically this period here, and uh, the whole Egyptian, ancient Egyptian history is spread from more or less 5000 BC with the pre-dynastic people to let's say Cleopatra, so it's like 5000 years. <laughs> And we are just getting, you know, uh, what, 500 years, you know, <laughs> so today in under 40 minutes, so it kinda, it's, it's a challenge. Everything started here. We are in Habidos and uh, we are in the necropolis called Um El Kab, and uh, which is, is means in, in Arab means the mother of the pottery, something like that. 
and um, this is the first necropolis uh, this is the first royal cemetery of ancient Egypt okay we don't have just the early dynastic period people here buried um, we also have the um, pre-dynastic people here so King Scorpion and people like that so um, uh, so this is for example this is the first tomb of uh, the first king of Egypt okay the, the, I mean the first tomb the, 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 you know King Narmer and uh, it was composed by two spaces now which one was the burial place uh, of the two I don't know but this already tells a little bit about the need of the Egyptians to build not just a space but something more than a space something more than a burial chamber and um, you would you, you would assume that one was for the body and the other was for the you know um, belongings you know the goods and uh, offers now everything was underground as you can see and was uh, excavated under this you know in the sand and then you would put uh, mud brick uh, in this period they used mud brick uh, as a building material and um, everything was then covered with um, timber beams and then on top they will put a little bit of mud brick, mud brick again and then sand on top so it's basically a burial place in the sand uh, under 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 the sand so yeah that's the the very first one so then Horhaha comes along the the, the son and uh, Horhaha build a triple tomb and uh, why why First of all, it's way bigger than Narmer, as you can see. I have done here a little, a little Indiana Jones. So, you know, it's like three meters tall, and uh, it's about what four by five, you know, uh, meters, and uh, roughly, you know. And there are three of them, and I wonder why, you know, why building, going through the trouble of <laughs> building three exactly, you know, they exactly the same uh, proportions. Um, I really wonder why they were buried. Maybe they were buried here, and then the other two for whom uh, was. And uh, Egyptology and archaeology uh, give you know tells us that this was all uh, for for King uh, Orhaha. And I wonder how you know how how he was uh, meant to be buried in three places. But then this guy didn't just do his own tomb uh, burial place. He also did this subsidiary graves and uh, yeah the theory is that he uh, back then Egypt uh, he would be the first one to do it but then we will see the trend later on as well and um, the first done the very first dynasty built subsidiary graves which means that every people that were uh, all the all the guys that all the people that were working for the pharaoh in life they will also work for the pharaoh after life Ooh, what does it mean <laughs> means that basically when the pharaoh when <laughs> When 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 the pharaoh died, uh, you would go with him if you were working for him. So, yeah, slaves forever, right? Uh, slaves, whatever. Like uh, people working for the pharaoh forever. And uh, this the same thing happens with Jer, and Jer was the the son of Horhaha. And uh, but the big difference is Jer did way more subsidiary graves. There are more than three hundred here. Uh, but his own burial place is here, and this is unprecedented. It's quite, uh, it's roughly the same height, you know, it's uh, the same deepness, sorry. Um, but it's way bigger, right? It's like more, what, 10 by 10, something like that. And it's almost a square. So it's the first time we see an almost square fig, um, you know, uh, like plan in ancient Egypt. And uh, they found here a mummified arm. Now, whether this with and with the jewelry, so whether this was uh, the arm of Jer or not, we will never know because the arm was um, thrown away when you know the, the arm went. Finnish Pitti found this, and they went. Uh, it all went to the Museum of Cairo, and then they took the jewelry, but they throw away the mummy, the mummy, the arm of the mummy. So. We will never know. Uh, this is the tomb of Den, and uh, here they found the first uh, piece of stone uh, used in architecture of ancient Egypt. I'm going to show you soon. But as you can see, so the big difference here is that yeah, the burial chamber is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit deeper, but there is a down uh, leading staircase or a ramp, 
and they have uh, portcullises. So this is the first time we have we can see portcullises. And now whether or not this ramp was, uh, I mean, they didn't need to do the ramp for construction. Uh, that's for sure. Um, so the assumption here is that they used it uh, to as a ceremonial uh, thing. Uh, so the scenario will be, I actually don't know what the ritual <laughs> will be, um, but yeah, they will use this ramp as a ceremonial place when uh, and uh, when everything was ready and done. They will close the portcullis and um, the tomb would have been sealed for forever and not <laughs> not forever because now it's it's open. Um, so this is the tomb of Ka uh, and it's a similar tomb. Uh, the arrangement is uh, very similar. The, the difference is that, as you can see here, is more the subsidiary graves are around the tomb, whether in Ka it's way you know it's all in the same structure which makes this tomb resemble a bit the architecture of temples of ancient Egypt. Uh, but uh, I mean, obviously this was all underground, but uh, if you go to search for the plan of this tomb, you can see a little bit uh, a, uh, a trend beginning of for, you know, the plan uh, of, of, of temples. And they also had here between the ramp and the burial chamber four storages, um, which uh, you will see in other tombs later on in, in Saqqara. And then comes this guy, this is the best. This was the father of Djoser, Djoser um, and this is the last uh, king of the second dynasty. So we jumped a little bit from the first dynasty to the, to the last of the second, and we will come back soon to the, to the, to the, to the first uh, dynasty. But uh, I just wanted to show you, this is the tomb of Kazakhenwi. And it's crazy. It's the best tomb of Abydos, in my opinion. It, there is stone there in the in the burial chamber, um, uh, and then you have this tomb. Is but first of all, it's huge, like a hundred meters, something like that. If I don't, I, I don't remember exactly the numbers, but it's super, like you know, long as you can see. The people <laughs> you can put the people in scale, and it's full of you know subsidiary. So I don't think these are subsidiary graves. These are probably uh, storage places, like for goods, things like that. And the tomb uh, apparently had a wall here between this north part and this south part. And there is an entrance here for um, for this part and an entrance here for this part. So it worked a little bit as a two s separated systems in a way. Um, but yeah, the burial chamber was in the middle. And it's it's, it's kind of crazy, and Ka because Kazakhan we didn't just build his own tomb in Abydos, he also did this crazy uh, monument which is called Shunet el Zebib, and uh, this is a mud brick construction. Is the huge like is the uh, is the oldest, biggest, massive buildings on earth, something like that, and. Uh, it's 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 quite big, and I don't remember the 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 actual measures, but it's basically like a football field, something like that, and um, and and yeah, this was discovered like like in the last uh, thirty years, something like that, by the German Institute of Archaeology, that basically was a an enclosure. So basically, they were doing rituals here to rejuvenate the spirit of the of the of, of the king. And every king that will come, they will uh, ir um, demolish the previous enclosure and build their own. And this was the last uh, who that was done, and was Kazakhenwi. Um, other kings before him, they, they did uh, other enclosures, way smaller and more than more than one, but they got all demolished. And yeah, every king that will come, they will build their own and demolish the previous ones. But he didn't just do that, he also did this, uh, which you can't see from the picture because it's so big that you can't even see it. Uh, they, Kazakhenwi also began the construction of a huge enclosure in Saqqara. Uh, when I say huge, I mean 600 by 200 meters, like in, <laughs> in that scale. And uh, it's just at the west side of the um, of the step of the step pyramid of uh, Djoser, the sun. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean this is called now the Gizral Mudir, and we there is not much you know uh, information about this monument, 
the only thing we know is that it was this huge building and uh, for some reason uh, they didn't never finished it and yeah so as we are in Saqqara now we're gonna step a little bit back in time uh, because uh, when Orhaha was building his own burial place in Abydos he was also building his own mastaba in Saqqara and now what 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 why like you already have one tomb in Abydos why doing another tomb in Saqqara and people say well this mastabas of Saqqara the very early ones are not tombs are ceremonial places and I'm like 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 cenotaphs and I'm like really like if they were cenotaphs you wouldn't need to build a burial chamber and then the argument is uh, well they wanted to make sure they have both uh, one in Masta one in Saqqara and one in Abydos so then anything got wrong in Abydos they could also burial uh, you know bury the, the, the king in, in, uh, in Saqqara if they need it so it's basically a redundant, uh, a redundant uh, way of building and making sure that the king had at least one at least one or two or three uh, burial places it's yeah, it's not too convincing to me, uh, but this is as, as far as I got into the explanation of why kings had more than one tomb. Um, as you can see here, uh, this building resembles a little bit the architecture of um, of Sumer, uh, but uh, it, this is in, this is ancient Egypt, so it's not like you know one or the other. It's it's back in time they were doing these things, and this is only mud brick, and it was uh, meant to be all plastered in white. Now inside of these uh, walls, uh, you you will have uh, a lot of like uh, storages, and then underneath you will have the burial chamber. Uh, as you can see here, this is uh, another mastaba in Saqqara, and it's actually the mastaba of Ka, King Ka, and he also had like you know the portcullises here. So the, and what you know the, the portcullises are in place, so which means that probably there was something here or somebody here, right? Otherwise, why closing it, right? So, yeah, whether or not this was used as a tomb or something else, uh, it's probably a tomb because it's, it sits in a necropolis, but then, and it's definitely in the period of Ka because they found seals uh, of Ka, but whether or not this was the tomb or Abydos was the tomb is still a bit of, uh, of a debate in archaeology, and uh, but mostly people believe it's... Uh, Abydos tombs are the tombs, the actual final burial places of, of the kings. Now, uh, yeah, as you can see, the some mastabas, not, not in the outside wall, because mastabas had like an enclosure wall, and then inside of the enclosure wall they will have uh, another wall. And in the interior wall they had these uh, decorations, and I know you, the pictures are very old, uh, it's like uh, almost a hundred years ago. But as you can see, they were decorated and they were in colors, so it was not black and white, it was actually, you know, uh, red, yellow, you know, things like that. Uh, and then this guy comes along, and, uh, comes along an Egypt, and um, he built this... Uh, it's, it's contentious because it, he didn't build a step mastaba. What you see here, this is a basic... Th this mastaba was done in stages, was built in stages. And uh, the, because you can see now the steps, doesn't mean that the steps were visible from the outside. So this is not really a transition between the mastaba and the step pyramid. Uh, but it's definitely a curious mastaba because uh, um, it's the first time we actually see a proto pyramid uh, resembling uh, shape. But yeah, this was this was not meant to be visible from the outside, and uh, also at some point this was basically uh, they were doing rituals and ceremonies while they were building. So this is why they had this step uh, figure because they could be, you know, they could uh, walk up and do their rituals and then you know. But yeah, so it's not yeah like a transition uh, sign from from mastabas to pyramids. And this is one of my favorite tombs of ancient Egypt. This is the tomb of Hotep Sekenwi. You can't see anything from the outside because everything is underground still nowadays. And it's a tunnel, like it's a gallery tomb. And what I mean by gallery tomb, it's basically a tunnel with a lot of 
like right and left uh, galleries and everything is underground and um, they use the stones uh, for the ceiling to support the weight of the of the tomb now it goes eight meters underground so it's not like one meter or two it's it's very it's pretty deep already and uh, this is the plan so and it's kind of crazy because it really resembles um, a space station you know so you will have this is like the stair and then this is the the public area where they could anyone could would be able to you know to give some offerings and then the first portcullis then you have a second um, series of galleries and then a third series of gallery a fourth series of galleries and then the fifth one is actually the tomb of of Hotep, of Hotep II. Um, now, if you see the south part, this is actually where uh, you had the, probably the burial place. And now the, I have a question for people who know more than I do. Um, I read that this part of the tomb was uh, resembling the architecture of palace royal palaces of of the time but i never found any uh ruin of royal palaces so how can somebody know I that this is the layout of the royal palace this, this is my question so yeah this is just a question I, I i don't know and because they were saying okay this is the bedroom and this is the toilet and this is the shower it's like really I mean, I mean, i'm not saying it's the shower but you know um, so I really wonder how can they, um, how can archaeology, you know, claim this? Uh, I really, it's, it's just a question. I'm really curious. And then this guy comes along, Joser. So Joser and him, Imhotep. So both, both of them. Imhotep is was the Grand Vizier, and Joser he was the king. So basically, he's like uh, King Charles the Third now in England, and the, the vice. Uh, sorry, the um, the. Um, the prime minister, you know, uh, Sunak, right? So, you know, it's that kind of relationship, the king and uh, the guy who is in charge of the government. So, um, so yeah, he decided that he didn't want to do any, like, uh, gallery tomb, any burial place in Abydos, any uh, mastaba. He wanted to do something way bigger and not just the tomb itself, but basically he was building a city, a city. And he didn't want just a tomb, he wanted a city, a village. And um, and this is what, <laughs> you know, this is what was uh, discovered uh, from, from, the, from the airplane. And um, as you can see, you have in the center the split step pyramid. So the step pyramid is a series of mastabas, one on top of uh, each other. And, um, and then you had this huge enclosure, which contains a south tomb. And um, and also the step pyramid inside of the step pyramid there is another tomb obviously, and then you had others uh, other like this like the you know these two mounds are the mounds uh, of of the offerings, uh, and then here there was found uh, an earlier um, uh, burial place here but I haven't found much information about it, and then all of this uh, east side are the funerary the mortuary like mortuary temple in a way like. Basically, here is the patio where they were doing the sad festival. Here will be the entrance, and all of this will be basically like symbolism, architecture, um, to to help the soul uh, for uh, in the afterlife. So yeah, it's pretty. It's a super complex tomb, uh, and uh, it's not. It's more than one tomb. Is uh, yeah. Uh, so this is the entrance, uh, as, it, as it has been reconstructed by Jean Philippe Lauer, and uh, in the sixties, I think. And um, this is where everybody, you know, uh, walk through nowadays uh, to to go to the step pyramid here to the right. And uh, as you can see, this resembles the architecture of the mastabas of the earliest dynasties. So it's pretty much old kingdom uh, already. And actually, you know, Joser is the first king of the of the old kingdom, uh, the third dynasty. And um, so, uh, the crazy thing is that inside of that entrance, you have this series of columns, which resembles a lot the Greek columns. Uh, now, these ones in specific, not that much, because these are you know the 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 relief is 
you know that you have the relief you it's like you know uh, whether other columns near the step pyramid they have they are carved in so like exactly like the Greek columns so yeah it's, it's the, these are the first columns of ancient Egypt or actually the first columns ever uh, in the world <laughs> stone columns at least um, it's kind of crazy right <laughs> This is the ser Serdab, if I'm not wrong, it's called the Serdab, right? Um, yeah, it was the Serdab, I think. <laughs> so basically, inside of this, uh, inside of what you see here, the stone uh, thing here, <laughs> there are two holes, and inside there is the there was the the, um, the statue of Ho of Djoser. Now that that statue, the original is uh, was brought to Cairo, uh, but now inside of here there is a copy. You can you can actually see, uh, uh, you know, you, you can see Joser there. The thing is, so you you can see the inclination here. First of all, it was inclined to match uh, with the inclination of the pyramid, and then you will be inclined uh, to point to the um, to the north stars. So because those north stars are the ones that never set. So yeah, and this is also one of the reasons why, uh, in principle, pyramids had those descending corridors, points to the north. But yeah, it's still, uh, to me is a little bit of a topic. This is the south tomb, and uh, as I, as I was saying to you, this belongs to the Djoser um, complex, so it's inside of the same complex. Now, why doing two tombs? I don't know, but uh, the thing is that this burial chamber here contains a sarcophagus that was too small for a body so one you know like why doing this <laughs> you know maybe they is be they began with doing this and they said ah, well, it's too small man let's do a pyramid i don't know maybe it doesn't make sense but uh, all we know is that there was a mastaba on top and uh, there are storage pl uh, places there is a descending corridor there is a burial place with a huge 30 meter shaft, the same dimensions as the Step Pyramid one. And then you had a series of underground galleries, exactly like the Step Pyramid one. So it's the same guy that built this, right? It's the same architect, it's the same artist, it's the same builders, okay? Now, uh, w this, you know, inside here there are blue tiles and uh, there are reliefs of Joser's, uh, of Joser, you know? So this belongs to Joser. Like it's not a topic, you know. This is belongs to Joser. Um, so so yeah, whether or not this was the burial place of a, of a child or a burial place for the organs is still under debate. Uh, so this is the shaft so, uh, seen from above, and uh, it's so you know uh, deep that you can't really you know see the bottom. And yeah, uh, you can see it's all stone construction, and then it comes to the bedrock, and it's all carved uh, in the bedrock. And uh, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? <laughs> this is the relief of Djoser in one of those blue tile walls uh, in the in the South Tomb Gallery. Now all of these blue tiles are in the Museum of Saqqara. They're not down there in the in the gallery. Some of them survived there, but in order to preserve them, they moved it to the museum. And this is the Step Pyramid now. The step pyramid is not was not done in one uh, single construction moment. It was done in more than one uh, construction moment. So it began with the with, with a square mastaba, which is kind of strange because it was ta it was the first time they used a square to do a mastaba. No, no, normally they were doing rectangles. And yeah, it was born as a as a square mastaba and then got enlarged, as you can see. Uh, I mean. This is already, what you can see here, this is already the enlarged version. Uh, so the, the original step mastaba was inside, is still inside. But then, so you, you got the uh, enlargement here and then a second enlargement to cover a series of shafts on the east side. And then they got to four, they began with four steps and then they finished up with six. So, so yeah, this is how, this is what we know about the construction. Now, this, the blocks are not huge. Uh, the blocks are, you know, like uh, something like this. <laughs> you can you can actually uh, see how they could have built this, right? Um, yeah, they didn't need a ramp uh, going all the way up. So, yeah. 
after after the st- I mean yeah of, of, so so basically uh, the, the 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 pyramid was built was being built and the underground galleries were being dug at the same time so they were doing this you know 30 meter shaft and this is actually a picture that you you can take after the Persian tunnel because when you enter in the step pyramid nowadays you enter through the Persian tunnel uh, and then you know uh, you come to the shaft and what you can see here this is supposed to be the sarcophagus of Djoser um, now this is a very strange one because there was never found there, there's no sarcophagus like this in Egypt this is the only one like this done in pieces of you know in, by pieces and also there is a plug here so it's kind of strange um it's, it's it's a very strange you know arrangement for a sarcophagus and uh, and then you have a series of galleries so one two three four um like in the corners of this shaft you had a ser- you you start to have a series of galleries which like five kilometers something like that uh, so it's like a long <laughs> long series of galleries as you can see, you can see the step mastaba. Uh, you can see the, the mastaba, and then you, the, you see it was enlarged here, and then you can see the four one and the six uh, steps. Uh, as you can see here, um, the layers are inclined towards the towards the inside, uh, but I can show you later in other pyramids better. Um, yeah, so they found in the in, so this is the shaft as you can see this is the burial chamber and in these shafts here on the east side they found p- like pieces of body uh, belonging to an earlier uh, time and I wonder why how how they came here and if they were earlier why not starting the mastaba on top of of the of, of of the earlier you know bodies uh, so Joser was probably a collector a collector of vases of the stone vessels and a collector of you know earlier people mummies or something like that uh, because also th- there are sarcophaguses here in these uh, tunnels that belongs to an earlier time so I mean yeah so this is the series of galleries that run down there and you can see there are two systems one system is centered on the burial chamber and the other system is basically these you know series of 11 if i'm not wrong uh, tunnels um yeah these are all drawings from jean philippe lauer and uh, it's uh, it's kind of it's uh, just he was the most like the, the expert of this area he di- actually doesn't have much you know uh, credit i think he he, des- he deserves this so these are the series of pottery. There are forty thousand pieces down there, found, and uh, they they are now spread all around the world. And uh, but there are still a lot down there, uh, chopped in pieces, and uh, a lot are in Cairo, and uh, a few are you know in the Egyptian Museum of Turin, and then British Museum, and all around the world. But basically, this is uh, what Uncharted X is uh, you know uh, advocating. These stone vessels are so perfect. And they are so different than these alabaster ones that one wonders uh, if this belongs to, uh, to to which industry these stone vases belongs because they were also found in tombs that date way back, uh, way back, uh, even before the pre dynastics. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's a topic, and then you can see Joser here, right? So it's not a contentious, contentious topic. The step pyramid was a monument, or a funerary moment, monument for Joser. So yeah. Okay, so then it comes the buried, the buried, uh, the so-called buried pyramid. Buried pyramid is such a, is such a topic because I'm not gonna tell the whole story because I'm gonna make it very short. So basically. What happened is the Zakaria Gonaim who was an uh, Egyptian archaeologist, and uh, it's a legendary one because um, he, he comes to Saqqara, he sees this like hill, and then he, he wonders if there was a pyramid there, and he starts to excavate, and he finds a tunnel and a, a downleading, you know, uh, tunnel, and then he opens the door uh, that was sealed, and then founds the burial chamber. He discovered that this was a, was indeed a, a, a pyramid. And it could have been a oh, second cat, the, the, the son of Joser. 
and uh, it was supposed to be a step pyramid uh, taller than the, the Joser one uh, just one step more one or two step more and um, but he also found the sarcophagus inside in the burial chamber and was sealed so he called the president uh, Nasser and everything and the press and everything was ready everybody was ready everybody came there in the 60s in the in the burial chamber and when they opened the sarcophagus they found it to be empty and so this is a strange story now Zakaria unfortunately he was uh, accused to have stolen a few pieces of some you know of something in Saqqara and he you know what you know got a little bit pissed pissed off by these accusations and he threw himself in the Nile and um, but at the same time Jean-Philippe Lauer uh, found out that those pieces that were uh, he was accused of stealing they were in you know they were still in Saqqara they were still there they found it but it was too late, right? So, so Zakaria uh, decided, you know, to take his life, and it's it's a, it's a bit of a sad story. But yeah, this is uh, what we have about the buried pyramid. Um, so here is Zakaria Gonaim. Uh, yeah, this is the story. This is the sarcophagus uh, as it was found, and as you can see, this 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 thing on top is basically a protection for for the flowers that were still in, in place. Um, and the, the whole chamber was never finished and the whole pyramid was never finished which gives us a lot because <laughs> this is what has been found to the west side of the pyramid so you, as you can see this is the wall of the pyramid outside and this is the leftover of the ramp yes so now um, Yes, so basically this shows that pyramids were built using ramps, but yeah, and this ramp is done by, you know, leftover of uh, rocks and stones and a little bit of mud, but I mean these blocks, you can see them, they are not too big like the pyramids of Giza, so one wonders, uh, okay, for, for sure they, they might have used ramps, fine, fair enough, and then they dismissed it. But this doesn't explain the Pyramid of Giza. This explains the earliest pyramids. Um, but yeah, but, but you know, we have a picture, right? <laughs> so this is also quite, uh, quite, uh, quite important. Um, this is the series of mastabas that were done uh, by Sanakt, and uh, p perhaps uh, they were. They are, they are called also Djoser terraces for some reason. Uh, but most probably this is the burial place of Sanakt, uh, the son of Second Cut, and uh, these are huge mastabas, and they're not close to Abydos, they're not close to Saqqara, uh, they're just in the center of Egypt, okay? Um, uh, they, they're called Mastaba K1, and they were basically explored by John Gargstang, uh, and then but these are all uh, mud brick constructions, and uh, they were probably cladded in stone, uh, not in the outside, but in the inside they had some, they, you know, they found some stone uh, cladding. Uh, part of it obviously is uh, over the ground, part of it is obviously under the ground. You can see the series of portcullises that were basically dropping the stones from the top down. And you have a series of here of uh, offering um, let's say wells okay and uh, and this is quite important because this is where uh, the architecture began to be over scaled okay um, okay so basically what happens now is the after Sanak uh, you know uh, it's, we're still in the third dynasty and this is actually Huni the, the last king of the third dynasty and he did decide to build seven pyramids plus one. And I say seven pyramids plus one because all the seven pyramids that we know of by, were done by him, they were cenotaphs. And they were basically done over Egypt, like all over Egypt, from, top, from the north to the south, spread. And they were very small, 30 by 30. 
without any internal chamber, without any, you know, tunnel or anything. Um, they were ceremonial ones, that were cenotaphs, they were remembering to the people that Pharaoh, the king, is there, in their territory. Yeah, so basically it's like advertising, you know, the, the, the kingship. And you have a series of them, so one is the Pyramid of Sela in, uh, in, uh, in Hawara, basically. Uh, one is in Hebenu, in, and this is the only pyramid that was built in the west side of, of the Nile, all over 3,000 years. And they were all step pyramids, uh, as far as we know. The Pyramid of Nubt, um, the Pyramid of Sinki, which still has a little bit of ramp here, as you can see. Um, but doesn't, I don't know why it's still there, because it was supposed to be finished, right? Uh, then we got the Pyramid of El Kula, and uh, you can see the, 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 the building construction is the same, right? It's the same uh, technique. So, and the Pyramid of El Genimia as well, uh, this, sits, uh, it's, it's, this is close to Abydos, if I'm not wrong, or south of Edfu, something like that, I don't remember. And uh, this is the Pyramid of Elephantine, the only pyramid done completely by granite. Uh, because uh, you know Aswan is close by, they use this um, this this stone. All of them were not, you know, they were not done um, with internal chambers. So uh, yeah, so he Huni apparently didn't just do the seven pyramids plus one of Meidum. He also did Mastaba seventeen uh, apparently. Um, whether or not. Mustafa 17 was for Huni or, you know, some son or brother or, you know, parents. We're still not sure. We, we're not sure uh, to whom Mustafa 17 was built for. Uh, but this is basically one of the biggest Mustabas of ancient Egypt. And the crazy thing about this tomb is that the burial chamber is still intact, extremely well preserved and with unbelievable stonework and this is the first time ancient Egypt get to a level of stonework that is mind-blowing uh, and this is the first very first uh, very first time it's actually the internal chamber of this mastaba it's way more mind-blowing than the actual pyramid of Meidum uh, to the where this picture is taken from so, but, so as you can see, the mastaba, you know, is a prop, is a normal mastaba. And the curious thing about this mastaba is that the uh, the, the, the internal chamber didn't did never reach uh, the outside. So whenever P3 came here and and excavated and find the entrance, uh, he found it to be already um, you know robbed by somebody. Um, but yeah, so it was, you know, uh, this tunnel here that you see, it never reached the outside. It's, you know, so the, this means that it, this was the, you know, clever way of doing tombs. And not like uh, the pyramids, where pyramids, uh, they actually reach the outside, so anybody can just spot the entrance and enter. Um, megaliths. On top of this chamber, there are, like, these huge pieces of stone these are more or less two meters high um, and it's just uh, you know by one meter and it, you know it's it's one of those uh, it, it's done in limestone so it's not granite but you know it's pretty it's pretty much uh, of a rich uh, so as you can see this is the first this is the sarcophagus uh, of the mastaba and as you can see you know it's a crazy mind-blowing level of <laughs> of craft of craft craftsmanship um, but I actually wanted to show you the ceiling I don't have a picture here but if you if you if you you know you can you can go to the sailing stone uh, website and see the pictures of the ceiling it's that's that's mind-blowing because they they're so well done and so well cut it and so well fitted um, so yeah uh, so this is granite, and uh, you know it's the first sarcophagus uh, of granite and that has uh, ever been found. Now, if I'm not wrong, the Joser one is also in granite, but yeah, it's a different granite, I think. Um, okay, so uh, we come to Snefro now. So 
I'm gonna go I get you. We are almost at the end of the talk, and this is the most important part because everything happened in over 30 years. So basically, from this mastaba here to the Great Pyramid of Giza, uh, there are what 30 years, something like that. So it's kind, of, it's 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 a, such a big jump uh, technically uh, in a sh such a short amount of time. Snefru, after Huni, comes along. He is the biggest pyramid builder ever uh, in the world. Why? Because basically the theory is that Huni started to build the Maidum pyramid. He probably finished it and then Snefru comes along and wants his pyramid to be done in Dashur. He starts with a 54 degrees angle, a little bit steeper than the Maidum one. He found out it was too steep, so then it reduced it because of structural reasons. This is the main theory uh, of uh, archaeology. And uh, he didn't like the shape, so he decided to go a little bit north of the shore, still like, uh, whatever, 300 meters from, from that, and to build a same, the same uh, a pyramid of the same height of the Ben Pyramid, but with a true shape the first true pyramid ever and at the same time he decided to clad in limestone Tura limestone the pyramid of Maidum plus he also built a satellite pyramid on the south side of the bend so how could he achieve in 28 years all of this it's uh, one of it's one of those questions uh, also because the pyramid of, of the band pyramid if you see the blocks of the, pen, the of the band pyramid, they're not like the blocks of Saqqara, uh, of, jo of Djoser. These are not blocks of the third dynasty. This is fourth dynasty and fourth dynasty pyramids are another level. Uh, the blocks are way bigger and also the sophistication of the chambers increases a lot. So as you can see here, we have a descending corridor we never saw this before. This is the first time we, we see something like that. And then we have chambers inside with percolices and tunnels. And uh, this is the Maidum pyramid. Then the, the Bent pyramid, same thing. The sending corridor, same inclination, you know, 28 degrees to reach the, north, the, the stars of the north. But then here you have more than one chamber and more than one descending corridor. This is just the north one. Then you have this upper chamber, which is linked to the west. So, and then you have like a chimney here, like it's, it's way more complex than ever before. Uh, you can see here, this is a corbelling ceiling. I'm not gonna show you soon, but they started to do corbelling ceilings and not just flat ceilings. Um, I mean, they started here in Medum, but yeah. And here, the satellite pyramid, yes, there is a descending corridor, but then there is an ascending corridor. And why not just going through all the like why going through the trouble of going down and then up if you could just go horizontal right so it's just to show you the level of complexity that the fourth dynasty uh, got into in comparison to the third dynasty one and then comes the red pyramid with they didn't have any subterranean chamber they just did everything you know in the pyramid with three uh, ex like extremely well preserved uh, corbelling ceiling chambers, one of which is above, like 10 meters above another one. So, uh, and, and this pyramid didn't have any portcullis, so it was never closed. Like, and all of them were cladded in uh, Tura limestone. All of them were supposed to be white, and the bent pyramid still has some of those cladding uh, on. In fact, this is the pyramid that. Uh, of which the cladding uh, uh, survived the most. So this is the pyramid of Meidum. Uh, it's like is this one here, and everything uh, like all that is survived is the internal structure, and you can still see a little bit of the of the, uh, of the cladding here. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is what survived. It's so fascinating, and uh, you can see here there are different levels. And basically, this is uh, w because it was enlarged, okay? So first they did a little one, and then they enlarged it, and you can still see the progression of the enlargement, as you can see in this diagram, right? So you can see, uh, sometimes you can see the first pyramid, 
and sometimes you can see the second it, it was basically fell down over time and we can see the internal structure of it uh, apparently, yeah, it, uh, it began as a step uh, pyramid and then it was cladded by Snefro, in principle. Uh, the uh, stones of the internal structure are a little bit inclined towards the inside, which makes the pyramid more stable, uh, whether the cladding stones are horizontal, uh, which is very important, I'm going to show you later why. This is the leftover of the um, of the internal chamber of the Maidum one, and you can still see there are a few timber logs which were most probably used as um, you know to move um, stones in a way to use you know to like I don't know how to say in English but yeah to to help construction basically, and you can see this is a corbelling ceiling. Um, so is, this is actually the first corbelling ceiling ever in uh, ancient Egypt. It's not very well preserved, but you know it's the very first one. So this is the Bent Pyramid, and it's probably my yeah, it's probably my favorite pyramid in ancient Egypt. And it's still you know you can still see the cladding stones, uh, the white, but obviously over three thousand years. So this is uh, more than three thousand years. Sorry, four thousand years. Uh, this is, you know, the sand uh, got, you know, the pyramid got the color of the sand, etc., because of the wind and, and etc. But the reason why these uh, cladding stones are still in place is because they were done uh, with an inclination, okay? So they were put it in place, inclined, and not horizontally. Uh, so they resisted uh, time. Whether after this pyramid, uh, for example, in the pyramid of, uh, of the red pyramid and the pyramid of Giza. They were done in horizontal layers, um, so which sucks because you know. But yeah, so uh, as you can see, this is the 54 degrees, and then they got to 43 uh, to match with the red pyramid um, measure degrees. Uh, yeah, so this is basically the third uh, tallest building of ancient Egypt, the third and the fourth. It's the same as the red pyramid, the same height. And you can see the the entrance is over here on the north, as uh, all the uh, old kingdom tombs, all the old, old king, all the fourth dynasty uh, pyramids. Um, yeah, it's my favorite uh, pyramid. <laughs> and as you can see, so basically these are the you know the dimensions of the blocks. It's way bigger than the Djoser ones, right? Uh, as you can see, maybe you can see these are this is a slight inclination towards it. It's not that they are 30 degrees, in, you know, inclined. That's just 10 degrees, but that's just enough to hold the cladding together for the millennia. Um, so, so yeah, I wanted to show you this picture. Now, this is the, the north system. Is there, there is a descending corridor, and then once you're there, there is this first chamber. Stairs were found there at the beginning, so whether or not these were original, still a, still a debate. Uh, this was probably the main chamber with the chimney, which we don't know exactly why it was there. There is a window here between the chimney and the burial chamber, we don't know why it was there. The, this chamber uh, is a four-sided corbelling ceiling, so it's not two sides, it's four. Now, above this chamber, there is a little corridor that connects with another system of chamber, which is the upper chamber. So at this level, this is the base of the pyramid. So here we are underground, here we are overground. And in this upper chamber, this is linked to the west, which doesn't make any sense with the um, tradition of the of orienting the funerary monuments to the north, right? It's the only time we have uh, a chamber uh, oriented, oriented to the west for some reason. Now the cool thing about this system, the west system, is that yes there is a descending corridor which was opened up by um, John Shaw Pering, if I'm not wrong, and you have two corbelling, sorry, two um, uh, portcullises, okay, and these two portcullises are not vertical, this time the portcullises are inclined, so they were sliding in an, on an inclined plane, the stones it's and then they, they had they put mortar so they could you know they would you know stay in place forever uh, it's kind of crazy you know uh, and yeah and this is the the burial chamber or, or the upper chamber now this is the, you know the percolis as you can see the, it's inclined and it's it's pretty crazy 
this is a picture of the lower chamber. It's as far as wrong. It's almost twenty. I don't remember the exact measures, but it's almost twenty meters. Okay, high. Um, so now these are the uh, modern staircase to you know you can climb up and go to the other to the other chamber. It's very narrow the connecting tunnel, so they will you know they will never it was never done to you know bring goods. It was just for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, there are bats still there, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's I mean yeah. If you go there, make sure you you don't wake them up. <laughs> Uh, yes, we have timber found in the upper chamber. Uh, what you see here, this was probably underneath these timber beams, was probably the burial chamber. Now, there is no sarcophagus, and they will never have been able to remove a sarcophagus because then they would have removed these beams, right? So, whoever excavated this hole, they found this space empty, probably, or I mean, I suppose. <laughs> Now, how this beam is still in place after 4,000 years, I don't know. But yeah, uh, so this is the upper chamber. So this is me on top of the satellite pyramid. I'm going to show you very soon. The blocks are, you know, more reasonable size than the bent pyramid. And this is, you know, the descending corridor. A little bit of an horizontal. Now I found, um, like, um, I don't remember the name. I'm sorry, but one of the uh, one of our followers and uh, in the community, he reached he reached out to me and sent me a picture of uh, what here there was a portcullis, uh, but then I'm not too sure about that. But uh, yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, so so basically there is this ascending corridor and uh, two plugs stones are still in place. And the other two are not, so one wonders if the, these two are still in place. Fine, but then these ones were probably plugging the this, you know, corridor, uh, and they were probably removed, right? Uh, so, so yeah. Um, so this had a system of you know clo closure. But yeah. Um, so yeah, and this burial chamber here, uh, it's too small to, to contain a body. So it's either this pyramid was for the organs or for a child. Same thing that happens with uh, Djoser. Which is the only explanation that the Egyptology and archaeology can, can actually have. You know, It's either for a kid, it's either for the organs. Just because it's small. Uh, it's not a lot, but yeah, it's what we have. This is the unprecedented level of uh, craftsmanship of the stones of that specific chamber. It's uh, really good, and um, yeah, it's that it's as the level of the Mastaba 17. So it's way better than Maidum, way better than the Bent Pyramid. Um, so yeah, and uh, and then you know you have this huge block here uh, covering the tunnel. It's 1.8 meters tall, if, I'm, if I don't remember wrong, or 1.2 at least. So everything is in, you know, limestone and same as, as anything else. Now, this is the Red Pyramid. This is the last pyramid I'm going to tell you. Uh, this is the last monument I'm going to tell you about. And it's the last uh, monument that was built before the Pyramid of Khufu. Um, this is 105 meters tall. We still don't know exactly how... Uh, the measures of the perimeter of the sides because there is still sand right there so but we have an idea you know um is the you know is 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 45 degrees more or less um the um, the inclination uh which means that the height is half of the of the size so it's, if it's 105 height probably the sides are 210 right if i'm not wrong um, so this is the internal you know, system, and there is um, you know the descending corridor as always, uh, with the same inclination as always, like 28 degrees. Now this pyramid is the first pyramid who was done in horizontal layers from the beginning, uh, with blocks that weigh you know are like 90 centimeters. Whether with Khufu, these are double the size, okay, or you know at least you know uh, a little bit more <laughs> more than 90 centimeters. Um, this is the tallest entry point of any pyramid of Egypt. It's like 29 meters up. 
and then you go down but for 63 meters it's long it's a long walk uh, and then you go down you have this horizontal corridor you have the first chamber then a, an horizontal corridor that links the two and then the second chamber and then one say well that's it then you have two chambers but then for some reason they decided to do a third one up like in the band pyramid you know they had this connection between the lower and the upper one and this was probably plugged but some people just found out and they went up and yeah and just found this chamber probably they, they would probably found it empty so they started to excavate the ground and they left it uh, with the with the you know with the with the void I'm gonna show you the picture later uh, so this is the internal chamber, um, the, the, this is the north one, we have the north, the south and the upper one. So this is the north one and you can see here uh, the huge lintel above the uh, horizontal corridor. This is 1.8 tall. <laughs> uh, and it's just crazy guys, it's just crazy. And you can see right, the, the level of uh, craftsmanship, the stoneworks and the fitting of them. This is the level of Khufu, okay? Uh, so yeah and this is the the south chamber with the modern staircase that brings you up to the upper one to the upper chamber the again the the, the corbelling ceilings are extremely well preserved uh, they all have this you know black stains here some people believe it's like because of pyramids were a chemical whatever farm <laughs> and whatever <laughs> Now there is this block uh, with um, history for granite and um, ancient architects. Um, you know they they, would, they uh, think that, that this might lead to another chamber. Uh, fine, <laughs> good, uh, good, good spot. Now the, the original floor would have been at this point, uh, at this height. You know, and some people just came and you know uh, just destroyed the floor, looking probably looking for treasure. Uh, they probably didn't find anything, so they just left it uh, as it is uh, right now. Um, we don't know who did it, um, so so yeah. Uh, yeah, so my talk will finish here. Now, uh, I, I've tried to explain you everything that <laughs> went from the tomb of Narmer, the first king of the first dynasty, to the pyramid of Khufu that you see here. Um, the Pyramid of Khufu is uh, totally another level uh, compared to the one that I uh, showed you today. Um, but uh, we don't, you know, the Pyramid of Khufu deserves a lecture on its own, so I'm not gonna, you know, uh, talk you through uh, the Pyramid of Khufu today. Uh, one day, probably, I'm gonna do uh, more than one video on the Pyramid of Khufu. I'm still not ready to do that. But yeah, I wanted to show you the developments from the very first tomb to to the best monument on earth. <laughs> um, thank you, and uh, yeah, consider to consider to subscribe and uh, to like uh, the video. <laughs> and I guess I see you very soon. Bye bye.